Hi, this is Jeremy Bryden with Core Squared Software Solutions. Today I'll be talking about octrees and uh, voxel data compression for a small video, uh, video game that I've been writing for the past couple of days. Uh, the whole point of this video game is I attempted to create an output similar to the Minecraft game. Uh, I created another similar project a couple of years ago uh, called Cubism, but I didn't have too much success with getting the correct frames per second or even the uh, memory size requirements that were actually reasonable for the average PC. Uh, so I started searching around and I found something called an octree. The basic premise of an octree is, is that you take a, a cube volume and you go ahead and split it in every dimension. So imagine you have a plane going through the middle x-axis, the middle of the y-axis, and the middle of the z-axis. And from there you only allocate memory in one of those quadrants, or any of those quadrants, that actually needs it. If there isn't any uh, need to read or write memory in one of the given quadrants, we leave it alone. What's also nice about that is we could change the resolution, uh, meaning we could change the minimum chunk size, so that instead of allocating a, a huge quadrant, what we could do is within that quadrant, we could treat it as though it's that original cube. We could split it up in those three axes, or axi, excuse me, and then allocate appropriately from there. Uh, it's just really fun to create these small little applications to teach me about this. Um, another way of thinking about octrees is imagine uh, an eight degree binary tree. So not a binary tree, but an eight degree tree. And you only allocate each node uh, as needed and the tree does have a maximum depth. It's, um, it's whatever volume you want divided by the minimum size. So what you see in front of you right now is that implementation in OpenGL on OSX. Uh, the red surface you see is a simple plane that's pitched going towards the X, or excuse me, going towards the Y and Z axis. Um, and then the green wireframe cubes are the actual chunks that are physically allocated in the memory, while the red chunks, so the big red cube that you see uh, surrounding this entire volume, are pointers pointing to nothing. So again, uh, just to try to communicate this a little bit more easily, uh, this entire data structure is just simply an 8 degree tree. You can see the root node is this big wireframe cube, and it itself doesn't allocate anything except for the bottom half, which does contain data. Within this bottom half, you have a couple of other cubes, and that keeps on uh, going down until the smallest size, which I think in this case is 16. So what's also nice about this project is I started experimenting with... Uh, with um, trying different ways of rendering uh, as fast as possible. So the naive approach I originally started off with was immediate mode rendering. Uh, I saved the results of those at the bottom of a white paper that I wrote uh, for this game that I'm going ahead and uh, publish with this video. The original approach was immediate mode, which is for each cube that we want to render, we just explicitly push it. And that means uh, for every frame that we want to render, we have to resend all of those instructions for the entire scene. For a medium-sized world of 128 by 16, and that means the world itself is 128 uh, units cubed, and 16 is the minimum chunk size, we got about 6.5 frames per second, which is pretty miserable for the average uh, PC. The second approach I had was immediate mode, but instead of actually iterating through each uh, uh, base cube, uh, I went ahead and actually iterated through the octree. So if I switch back to the original application, you can see that there's no memory allocated on the top. There's simply no green chunks and there's no need for it since the actual real game data is on the bottom half. What's nice about only rendering based on the octrees is that we skip uh, half of all the possible iterations, so half of all the possible indices, because we know the top half never needs to be allocated. Uh, and from there, the same world size, 128 by 16, improved about fourfold. So we went up to 21 frames per second. And from there, I started testing out some other technologies that I wasn't too familiar with at the time, but have now gotten a little bit more comfortable. Display list modes, uh, batching the entire rendering process and pushing it at once, uh, doesn't result in that much more of an improvement, 24, or excuse me, 22 frames a second. Uh, I started experimenting with VBO, so Vertex Buffer Objects. So we're actually allocating memory on the graphics card instead of trying to push the rendering instructions uh, every cycle. 
Um, and we got some pretty successful numbers uh, using the same world size, 128 by 16. We would get a solid 45 to 60 frames a second. Uh, there are a few things I'll have to experiment with over time, uh, mainly texturing. It'll be interesting to see how I could optimize texturing for a large surface area like this. Also, kind of up in the air is, I don't know what exactly is the best optimal chunk size. So these green cubes could be more or less larger. There's benefits and cons for both of them. Uh, a good benefit with a larger cube size is that means the tree depth is shorter. So that way we can iterate through these a little bit more quickly. The benefit, though, of going the opposite way, making these smaller, is we end up not having to allocate as much memory. If I zoom in on one of the corners, uh, let me try my best here. Here we go. If I zoom in on one of these corners, you can see on the middle left, the cube only needs the top row of it actually allocated. The rest of this green cube is completely empty. But again, if we allocate smaller chunks, then we get into issues of uh, a deeper tree that we would have to iterate through. Uh, I, like I said before, will be publishing this white paper on the premise of the project, which was a small uh, Minecraft Dwarf Fortress clone. Uh, I'll continue updating my blog if I have any success with, uh, with pushing out texture data onto the graphics card and really try to optimize this code. I'll go ahead and make it public. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. It's jgbryden at gmail.com or jbryden at cores2.